Good afternoon, everyone. I'm quite excited actually to be here to talk to you about true innovation. I know that you had a bit of a flavor before, so uh, let's talk about the true stuff now. <laughs> um, something it's, I'm going to talk about something which is, uh, which I've been only uh, discuss in uh, science fiction novels. Something that despite all the techno technological advances we've done in the 21st century, uh, many people still cannot imagine. We are in an age where what we think was impossible a few years ago is now reality. I'll give you a few additional examples on top of what uh, DJ uh, gave you before. Um, you've probably noticed that there's scientists that found um, a one-off switch to be able to stop cells, which could potentially stop cells from aging. We have access to endless technologies, endless knowledge. We have the ability to stay connected uh, with that kind of stuff. We have robots. We have driverless cars, we have nanotechnologies, um, we have 3D printing, uh, we have uh, computers, uh, artificial technologies, which giving us uh, the ability, fin, which can give us computers with uh, learning capabilities. So clearly, I want to tell you something, um, change and evolution are the only constant in life. John Fitzgerald Kennedy once said that change is the law of life. And for people who don't, who only look at past and present, are sure to miss the future. And the future is here, right now. And I'm going to talk to you about how the future of transportation will look like. One quick question for you. Um, how many modes of transportation do we have currently today? How many? One, two, three, four? Yeah, I think we have four. So the first one, boats, which as far as I can tell were invented 800 years ago. So it's a while ago. In 1804, we had the first railway journey in, uh, I think it's in 1807, we had the first car powered by the interna internal combustion engine. And in 1903, we had the first successful aircraft invented by the Wright, uh, Wright brothers. So obviously they're quite old, so it's time to uh, renew, to think about that. And uh, so they're relatively slow, expensive, and uh, harmful to the environment. So just to give you an example, if people are not, uh, if you're not yet convinced that uh, we need to change. <laughs> uh, it takes today, if you want to go by car from Montreal to Toronto, it takes you between five to six hours. And I think it's pretty much the same time you need to go from Thunder Bay to Minneapolis. If you do the same trip uh, by air, it will take you had to be the lucky uh, people uh, in Montreal and Toronto. It's going to take you uh, one and a half hours by aircraft. But you're not so lucky here. If you want to go to Minneapolis, it's going to take you um, six hours. Since, if I'm not mistaken, there is no direct flights. So, <laughs> so I want. <laughs> so we are in the 21st century. So it's time to reinvent and redefine the way our new transportation system. We have to make it more efficient, faster, and improve the way we commute. So let's step back. Let's step back a little bit. I'm not talking about the uh, latest electrical bike or the newest uh, hybrid car. I'm telling you that in a few years, you will be able to do Minneapolis Thunder Bay or Toronto to Montreal in less than an hour. <laughs> Don't trust me? <laughs> In less than an hour. I'm telling you that 
you will experience a fifth mode of transportation and you will be able to travel like the Jetsons. So, so you think I'm crazy? <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> so it's going to look like more like this. It's called Hyperloop. So actually, it's an idea which has been around for more than 100 years. We can find here some uh, tentative in the uh, uh, New York subway in uh, 1870. And it's been popularized by the entrepreneur Elon Musk recently. So now the question is, why do we need that? Why do we need a fifth mode of transportation? It's not like what we have today is uh, uh, useless, but we need to get something much better. Much better, why? It's environmentally sustainable. It's powered by renewable energies like solar panels. It's fast. Initial design are talking about average speed of 962 kilometers an hour. And the beauty of that is that you're in a protected tubes. So it's immune to weather conditions. You don't have to care about thunderstorms, snowstorms, turbulences, you're just protected. Whatever is happening outside, you can travel. You know that you're not going to miss your flight or kick back at the airport. So, what are we waiting for? What are we waiting for to get it happen? We're talking about driverless pods, which are going to travel at regular intervals, carrying passengers or cargo between two major cities. Those pods will travel at a speed which is 50% faster than an aircraft and 300% faster than a train. It's powered by renewable energies. It's reliable, safe to ride, and affordable to access. And the beauty of that ID is that it's not as difficult as putting a vehicle the size of a train coach in a tube okay, with almost no air. So how does it work? So first you need engines to be able to move at such a speed. So let's be innovative and uh, make them electric. You need a cabin, air cabin system so people can breathe. That could be a, a good idea. It's a similar system that, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're in a tube without air, so uh, <laughs> you need something. So uh, on an aircraft, it's bit different, you have air over there, but it's kind of minus 50 degrees, so here it's, you don't, don't have anything, so you need, uh, need some stuff. And, uh, and you need a levitation system to, uh, to take full advantage of having uh, no friction. So let's summarize. You have um, vehicles uh, in a uh, tube with no air, you're going to use electrical engines to be able to move at such a speed. Uh, yeah, so it sounds pretty, uh, sounds pretty uh, easy. And uh, <laughs> so, actually, it's so impossible. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's uh, more than feasible. We have in Canada today the engineering prowess and the techni technological know-how to make it happen. It's just a matter of putting everything together. So all those systems I've just shared with you have been already developed for the aerospace industry. Most of it. There's a slightly tweaks to do, but it's feasible. And put them in a tube, build that tube, and get it running. Today in Canada, we have people which already started to work on such a system, as we speak, right now. And for those which still believes that it's not going to be feasible, I have to tell you something. Um, I'm passionate. And uh, I'm good at one thing, is that whoever is telling me that it's not possible, I make a point to, make, to tell them that they're wrong. <laughs> and I'm kind of stubborn a bit on that. Um, and feel free to ask my wife. Actually, I don't know uh, how she puts up with me still after so many years. <laughs> and don't forget, a few years back, people doubted that we could ever fly. Today, we don't even blank an eye 
when we get on an airplane. Hyperloop okay, will change our lives like Internet did. <laughs> Just most of you remember um, those days when you, have to, you had to go to do some research or learning at the library. And to, you remember how much time it takes to do that. So those days are over. You, you remember how painful it was to be able to get hold of somebody. So we tried to write them a letter or get the hope to get them on the phone. So those days are over. With Hyperloop, just imagine, put yourself, uh, step back, and in a few years, you will be able to laugh on how much time it used to take to travel. Just imagine that tomorrow, you could live in Thunder Bay and work every day in Minneapolis. And you could commute every day. Just imagine that, OK, tonight I want to go and I want to watch my uh, favorite game in Minneapolis or wherever, and I will come back the same evening, 500 kilometers away. You will be able to order product online and get it the same day at your doorstep. With Hyperloop, you will be able to connect people, cities, businesses like we've never seen before. We'll be able to be a true community. And my message today is that even if the theme, the theme of that event today is what are we waiting for, we're actually not waiting. We have already started to work on that. We're smart people and we expect to this to see that happening in Canada within the next five to 10 years. Thank you. I have questions. <laughs> Watching your presentation, imagining getting in one of those tubes. Is it safe, Sebastian? Is it safe? Yes, definitely. Um, to make it safe, and uh, as every new transportation system, uh, we'll have to work with uh, agencies like Transport Canada to certify that product. And actually, one of the first applications uh, might be uh, cargo. Uh, they don't really care if they care. They care, but not as, as much as uh, we do about safety. So we may see cargo uh, as the first uh, application of that mm -hmm. product. Can your body adjust to that? I mean, I'm just thinking about our physical bodies going in there, having that speed. I mean, what happens physiologically? Uh, it's going to be horrible, but short. So don't worry. <laughs> it's like a trip to the dentist, eh? OK. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> yeah. so um, Initial so this is something we can play with. So if you want to be on a roller coaster uh, a vehicle, that's feasible. It just we need to tweak the acceleration, and uh, so that's something we control. So the initial acceleration we are looking after now it's to have something similar to what you can feel when you are on a subway. So it's yeah. so just to make it safe. So definitely it's to have a, a safe ride and even more comfortable than. Uh, what we can feel on an aircraft or on a train today. Probably have a little bit more leg room huh, than on an airplane. Uh, yeah, it's going to be depending on the price, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, okay, the next question, the price of the ticket. I mean, like, or the price of using this kind of transportation, because that's always a key factor. Yes, so clearly the key, and also for uh, government and for people, it's to get a flight, uh, flight or travel ticket, which is cheaper than what we can pay on an aircraft or a flight ticket. So depending on what's the distance and so on, it's to get cheaper than that. And in terms of infrastructure, uh, that's the same. We want to be uh, cheaper than initial study we could have seen over there for high-speed rail transportation. Wow. And uh, again, you said that the first application of this probably would be cargo. Yeah. So, and then you can also downsize the tube yeah. and uh, do the same as what they do at Costco with the cash, or even um, uh, with some, uh, anyway, we used to see that for mailing at some point in some buildings. Uh, 
This is so cool. I'm so glad you came here. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sebastian.